you. How are you today? I'm all right, thanks. It's really, really hot here in the UK. We're having a bit of a mini heat wave. Oh, you're lucky. We had a nice couple of days, but it's cold and raining today. Like it's proper cold. I put on the heat this morning. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it's really cold. Well, I'd give I'd give anything to be in your shoes right now. <laughs> it's just too hot where you are, is it? Oh man, it was like it was 80s in the 80s yesterday. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I do Neither. old school. Um, but it was, it, yeah, it was too hot. I, I'm, I'm looking after a dog at the moment. I couldn't take him out to about eight o'clock because the floor was too hot for him to walk on. Bless him. Oh, we think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good complaint, I suppose, to have some good weather. We had a beautiful few days there. It was lovely, actually. Yeah. yeah. yeah sunsets this time of year. Pretty stunning. It's such a British thing to do, though, to, to, to moan about how, right, how it's raining. We've got no summer. And then the summer arrives and everyone's going, cool, it's really hot, really yeah. hot. Yeah, <laughs> that's classic Irish as well. It's just like, oh, my God, are we ever happy? Yeah. <laughs> so, come here, Lisa, what are we talking about today? I'm pretty excited. What do you think? Right, we went, we were, we've got a couple of things that I think we want to talk about mm. that have been coming up for us. One is sort of taking feedback, unsolicited advice, criticism from people, and then how that links into being an HSP and maybe people's perceptions around that, do you think? Yeah, yeah. So I suppose where my thoughts are going on this to kick us off is kind of um, the term itself, highly sensitive person. Myself and yourself would be very well versed in what that means. And I suppose we know an awful lot of information around that. We've done a lot of research, we've done a lot of reading, you know, but for someone who's never heard it before, I suppose it just, it's just two descriptive words, isn't it? It's a highly sensitive person. And I wonder what the interpretation is of that term, what people actually, you know, what, what does it mean to everyone out there? You know, so I kind of asked a few people, did a bit of a poll this week, <clears throat> excuse me. And I think that you know, for non-HSPs probably in particular, but also for a lot of HSPs who wouldn't be aware of their incredible empathic abilities, right? Um, I think highly sensitive can be interpreted as, well, I can't really handle things or I can't take criticism or someone who's kind of shaky on it, you know? Someone who's like, you know, needs needs a bit of steadying or something. What do you think? I've experienced that with clients where they've had a lot of shame around it and they've, they've um, been uncomfortable in their sensitivity because other people have had these perceptions or are uncomfortable around them and don't know how to handle it. But can I just say that in the main, we're in a minority, let's say, as far as we know, as far as the stats show, we're in a minority. If we're living in a world that's non-HSP, then it is going to be misunderstood and people are going to be invalidating. And let's be honest, the world is pretty, I, I don't even know if it's the right word to say unemotional, but like we're really wired emotionally and we live from the heart and that isn't how non-HSPs live. And that is the world we live in. And that's mm. that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with us, but 100%. it can be that way. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, well, I suppose what struck me is that, you know, there's probably lots of HSPs out there who may be thinking along those terms because it's mm. the world we live in. It's the world we know, you know, and like when I <clears throat> when I heard the term, <clears throat> excuse me, highly sensitive person. I think I balked a little at first me, like the person who's like, you know, shouting from the rooftops now, like, you know, and very much um, I suppose I learned about being an empath first. And then I, I learned mm. about the term highly sensitive person. Um, but then I began to, when I, when, I, when I got the information, when I learned about what it means and the studies that have been done and the work of Dr. Elaine Aaron and lots of others, I got so much solace in it. There was so much peace and kind of like, ah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I get it. You know, that's been my experience. But I think a lot of HSPs don't get that far. I think they go, oh, no, no, that's not me. No, I'm fine. I'm, you know, and then and then they don't get as far as actually realizing that there's a whole deeper world of knowledge there around what it means to have empathic abilities, what it means to be wired differently, wired more, more sensitive to the world and more 
to have a deeper processing mechanism in your mind like you know it's 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 phenomenal yeah and when you said oh i balked at the being called an hsp when my therapist suggested it i did the same right because i oh, i'm really loud and chatty i didn't even know i was an introvert at this point <laughs> you know but i was going to say the word that was kept on coming into my head when you were talking then is courage mm. hsps have a lot courage and they need to have courage to exist in the world that we live in right yeah and the word courage comes from the french word cur which means heart and that's what i was saying like we live through the heart and it does take courage to swim against the tide is that you know like to to not go with everyone else um and and, and if we're being referred to as like words that come into my head now are like flaky or mm. <laughs> delicate or snowflake you know like mm. there's the there's the um the old school brigade that are like oh you know when i used to work with um highly sensitive children oh you know we're not raising snowflakes we're not doing kids any favors by wrapping them in cotton wool and it's like whoa 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 hang on a minute mm. who said anything about wrapping them in cotton wool exactly we're just meeting them in the space where they are which is in an emotional space and if you lack the emotional skills or the emotional literacy to be able to meet them in that space that's on you mate it's nothing to do with me Okay, so here's a question for you. Do you think that all HSPs, right, or the majority, would be more emotionally intelligent? You see, I don't think. Oh, see, I don't think the two go hand in hand necessarily. No, it's the journey that you go on, right? When you first come to discover that you're an HSP, because you're living in this. Can we call it the non-emotional world? We're living in the world that is the matrix. I like to call it. Yeah, we're living in the matrix. We have all these emotions. If let's say from childhood, we've been around people that and we didn't know that we were HSP, that haven't validated, that haven't tuned into our emotions, that have dismissed them or invalidated them mm. or even laughed at them or made fun of them, you know, or stop crying now, you know, or give you something to cry for is what we got told as kids. No. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not funny, but like, if you've been brought up like that, but then when you get into the emotional intelligence, like you just said, there's a whole load of relief that comes with that because you're going, oh yeah, that's my inner sat nav. Like when I get angry, that means I've got to set boundaries. And when I'm anxious, that means I'm not connected into my true self. Like I've gone up in my head and lost my, and it becomes like um an, your own inner map of, of how you navigate and make your way through the world. But you know, you don't arrive. I suppose it depends like where you've been in the past but i would yeah. say if you're coming into healing then you're not going to arrive with your emotional literacy intact are you well this is the thing i suppose like we as hsps i think emotional intelligent uh, emotional intelligence is kind of naturally accessible you know what i mean it's like we have a flair yeah. for it right it's there and we can tune in very easily but depending on life experience and i would say a level of self knowledge or a lack of self knowledge you know there can be defense mechanisms that people have put in place that completely block their emotional intelligence and i suppose where i observe it is maybe on some of the communities online the hsp kind of there's a bit of a woe is me conversation that can go on because, well, the world isn't suited to oh. us. And it's a what? wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to be an HSP. Well, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I think if there's a lack of emotional intelligence there and a lack of appreciation for what that means, then it can be like this thing we have to deal with. It can be framed that way. And that's what I think doesn't help when the non-HSP world is observing that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a whole, there's so many layers there of, for potential for mis misinterpretation. Yeah, so what you're saying is there's a, there's a community or there's a group who are uh, slipping into victim mentality. Is that what you're saying? I've observed that quite Around. a bit. Have you? I have, and I think, I don't think those people are HSPs. I think that's something completely different. I think when you first, I'm going to talk about trauma now, which I know is not relevant to everyone on here, but when you first come to heal your trauma, you are a victim. If, you're, if, you, if you've been abused as a child or you've experienced complex trauma, you are a victim. But with, a, with the steer of a good therapist and with, you know, 
doing regular sessions you soon come out a victim into victor yeah it takes time and you can slip back into that victim mentality but in no way do i think being an hsp is time to get the violins out and go poor me i'm i'm yeah. i'm celebrating i'm going thank god i've got intuition thank god i care about people and that i've got empathy thank god i'm wired up to my feelings how did I ever hope before I found out that I was yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. And the magic of the depth of processing, like it never ceases to amaze me. You know what I mean? Just the the joining of the dots, as I often describe it, and just being able to take one concept and just go deep in a hundred different directions and consider it from all angles. You know, I mean, there's just so many beautiful advantages to the way that our minds, that our brains are wired and our hearts are connected in and our our spirit is there. Like, I think we're all very much, um, it's, it's a, again, a natural affinity to maybe what's beyond our physical experience as well. You know, there's kind of that spiritual aspect I find with a lot of the people that I work with, you know, it's kind of, I guess the veil maybe is a little bit thinner between the conscious and the and the unconscious or subconscious, you might say. Yeah, so I think when I was talking before about emotional literacy, maybe what I was talking about was that we're very in tune with energy bodies, but actually no one's taught us about energy bodies. And that is relatively a new concept because we're very good at doing the physical keep fit, the nutrition, or not as the case may be, but we're all aware of that. We've been aware of that for decades. As a society kind of thing. Yeah. But, but the energy body is a new thing, but it's definitely, definitely, I mean, just the answer to most hsp's problems is ground your energy just ground i know ground i know and actually this is a good this is a good segue here now into kind of today's topic i guess you might say which is around feedback and criticism um or receiving criticism so i think we leave self criticism for another day because that's a massive topic so really it's more about when someone is providing us with feedback or or i suppose critique you might say on on our work or whatever whatever we're up to yeah um and I think when you're talking about energy what I have noticed through a personal experience lately um and I and I invited the critique I invited the feedback because that's what I do I'm I'm a business owner I have a growth mindset I want to know how I can improve and move myself forward and follow my vision you know what I mean so it would be crazy for me to kind of not walk the talk you know what I mean so I'm going to take the advice and the criticism and the feedback of people who know what they're talking about okay um, and that's that's the basis of a growth mindset so but how did I receive it I think is the question and I think what I learned the most is that it's almost not what is being said but how people are presenting it that HSPs will be tuned into and I think that mm -hmm. It's the energy that's coming at us that tends to sit heavy on that, maybe the heart chakra and the solar plexus. And that sits heavier than the actual implement, like the actual implications of the criticism itself. Am I making any sense? Absolutely. It's the intention behind the words. And I think, let, let's be honest, nobody likes to receive negative feedback, right? Yeah. We all want a Head. we all want to be told the things that we're doing well we all want to be encouraged so like hsp or non-hsp hearing that kind of stuff is not nice because we all we because we're conscientious and we care and that's why we want to do very well. conscientious yeah it's very common indeed but the point that you made is important because and maybe we can talk about unsolicited feedback afterwards because that is that is also an issue and it's different though like sponges yeah because we're like sponges and we absorb yeah and give us stuff and we can take it on and make it our truth and it it doesn't need to be like that but yeah. you specifically asked so like, let me I, I know you probably can't share too much about the situation but let me try and sort of understand a bit more about yeah. what happened you were working on a project or, or something and you asked for feedback and then it, what, what was the kind of situation you were in getting the feedback was it just one-on-one -on -one or were you in a group or it was, um, I suppose it was accessible to several people. It was a pre-recorded kind of a feedback from a mentor. Right. And <clears throat> and it was based on um, 
my my messaging, my kind of content around. And like ironically, you know, it's about me trying to reach more HSPs. <laughs> it's about me actually trying to call in my people into my world so that I can help them. You know, so it's a very interesting look at it because the feedback I got was from a non HSP. You know, so then I began to wonder, well, is that because this person maybe doesn't quite get it or, you know, and then I started to question that. Is that is that my own? Can I not take the criticism? You know, uh, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? You know, and I went into my depth of processing, uh, you know, and and processed it through as, as you do, you know, sorry. No, um, just just want to focus in on that. Am I doing it right or am I doing it wrong? Because yeah. I made notes. I don't know what I've done with my book now. I don't know where I've put it. I made notes and that was one of the things I said. I just think we should back that is very black and white thinking, right? Right or wrong. That's black and white thinking. And black and white thinking is not helpful thinking. And it's not even healthy because nothing is black and white. There are always shades of grey. Yeah. And into context, nobody's ever wrong they just might be doing it differently and it might be not how the other person would do it but there's more than one way to skin a cat or whatever the expression totally. is yeah so like yeah i think it's interpretation you've got to come out of that black yeah you've got to come out of that black and white thinking for a start because yeah. uh you know unless you're breaking the law and it's very i mean there are situations that are black and white but feedback on your messaging is very subjective is that the right word yeah but i suppose you know I suppose when you have a certain, so so when we're talking about accessing our intuition all the time, okay? And then we talk about yeah. being very conscientious, right? So I'm kind of a very diligent student, you know, I kind of always mm -hmm. was, you know? So then if I'm learning something from someone else who is an expert in that field, then I will have my pen and paper out and I will be diligently and conscientiously taking notes and applying what I'm learning. You know what I mean? And I think that can lead to all or nothing black and white thinking. And I see it with my clients all the time. It's quite a natural place for HSPs to arrive to because of the depth of processing. Do you know what I mean? And bringing yourself yeah. to that gray place is very important. And that's what I think the processing does. But you have to be, you have to be patient and compassionate with yourself as that processing happens. I also think you have to have a very strong sense of self. Yes. You have to be, you have to, and that's when we talk about grounding, like you have to be grounded in the sense of I know who I am. Yeah. And actually I know where I'm going with this messaging and actually does that. So I don't, I don't know if you feel into alignment in your body, but I do. So a no mm -hmm. for me, bench fist in my tummy, like everything tenses up and a yes is very expansive and my chest opens up, my energy changes. Mm. And so it is good to get, feedback from professionals and experts but I always say to my clients like if that's not resonating with you or if that doesn't land let's 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 try some other ways because mm. ultimately you're the one that's going to be doing this every day so it's got to work for you well absolutely I suppose that's that's a style of coaching then um you know and it's a it's I suppose it's as as you were saying earlier like when me when myself and yourself get together we just kind of understand each other so there is no need for preempting a lot of things, you know, through the conversation. It's just kind of a given. And that's probably something that's quite natural from one HSP to another. But the reality yeah. is that we're all living in the matrix and we have to be able to function with 80% of people who are non-HSPs. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of being able to recognize both yeah, and I think that's another reason why I, I, I over explain. Like, I got criticism on my YouTube channel yesterday by someone who I don't even know. Like, I'm always going, no one comments. Why is no one talking to me? And <laughs> someone comes in and goes, stop with the small talk, get to the message. I did eat it anyway. But actually, I was like, I could have compassion for myself then and go, God, I know I'm an over explainer, but also I'm creating rapport and I'm chatting with my audience. And I thought, this is a good one, Jade justify argue defend or explain oh, very you know, good. Yeah. people there are certain people in this world that will get you into circular conversations or arguments or using this jade if you find yourself having to justify argue defend or explain the way that you are the way that you show up the way that your energy is they're not a good person for you to hang around with are they mm -hmm. 
that's an interesting one I haven't heard that before Jade I like that mm. and do you find that you're still having to do a lot of explaining or is that something you used to do no I think I do it naturally I mean I'm a big talker you, you know that about me you're a big one and Sorry, words is my to... love language and yeah. I probably oh, oh, I'm, a big talk, that again. I'm a big talker talker I'm a big yeah <laughs> and I probably use 20 words where I use 10 so I, I'm aware of well you're an author you know how I am. you're a wordsmith no but I think that's part of who I am and so I'm like why would I want to like if I'm saying too many words and that's you can't that's not your type of person then there's a million other channels on YouTube that you can go and listen to go and listen to them you know like I'm like everyone is entitled to have an opinion and what sits right with them but I mean that that instance was unsolicited feedback so that's a different thing entirely it's very yeah. boundary breaking it's boundary breaking to just um tell people how to be if they haven't asked you but your situation is is a bit difficult but I think do you do you are you an over explainer no and not anymore no. at all well I suppose there was a time in my life where I would kind of feel the need to explain or feel the need to fill in the the details um, mm. or to kind of uh, demonstrate my empathy, demonstrate my understanding of what's in front of me. Do you know what I mean? Through words. Um, and I suppose through the years of understanding what it means to be an empath, understanding, you know, the the need for boundaries the power of boundaries where I'm placing my power where I'm taking it back then yeah. I started to just explain an awful lot less and I realized there was an awful lot of peace in in not having to constantly justify um things or or indeed it's kind of like well if I'm in a situation where I could be explaining for 10 hours and we're still not going to get anywhere you know I'm going to conserve my energy kind of thing do you know what I mean Some but if someone's somebody... interested, I will I will nerd it up and harp on for, you know, if somebody wants to like we like ourselves here, you know, I will go deep, you know, but only if that I can feel that there's a, a resonance there or an invitation to do so kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, some people are committed to misunderstanding you. I mean, there are just people that are antagonistic like that, I think you find. But I like that idea of like protecting your peace and it does come down to boundaries I mean a lot of this is about boundaries because I know we've talked yeah. about this on here before but when we I am exercise and it was a choice who you were and how you showed up and all the different roles in your life mm. and that was so empowering to me because and and maybe some people who are HSPs or empaths on here can relate a lot of the time when you're a kid you get told who you are because you're very sensitive to those imprints and you pick up the energy of people around you. You might pick up the way they talk or you might copy and mimic because you haven't got a very strong sense of stuff. I mean, kids don't anyway. Kids are, but, I'm, but I'm just saying in the main, you know, like when you turn up to do this work, identity is a big part of the of the work that we do, yeah. isn't it? Big time. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, identity and boundaries go hand in hand. And then I suppose to bring it back to to receiving feedback or criticism, which can be hard for HSPs, it's understanding. So if you are triggered in a given situation and you have received criticism, it's kind of taking your curiosity with you and kind of saying, right, God, look at that now. Look at what that has done. Look at how I'm feeling there and being able to step away from it. And look mm. at it with a high level of curiosity, I think is the best thing, because then you're honoring your true self and you're giving that the grounding that it needs. But you're putting a boundary between that and what has been thrown at you. Do you know what I mean? And you kind of have to let the dust settle around the energy that's come towards you. It's triggered you. But all that dust has to settle before you can make any kind of decision around it or make any kind of judgment for yourself around the feedback you've received you know and that will take longer for a hsp than a non-hsp for sure okay. yeah you can't pro you can't process that energy while you're triggered because in your triggered state exactly. your your brain has gone offline it's like spinning you know the laptop spins around you can't yeah. gone. you've got to focus on grounding yeah and taking care of your energy and then i always think it's useful I find to talk through with someone else or I might journal on it or I might take it to my therapist or I might talk to you or I might talk to my sister and yeah. say, 
what this thing happened and like I felt like this and actually it's being in tune with your body where does that come in like does it come into your heart space is it has it really dug you in the solar plexus like and then what is the feeling that it evokes in you because if it is shame if it says I should have done it differently or I've done it wrong and you make yourself wrong and that's that's coming from a really young part of you if it makes you feel small and powerless or do you ever get that feeling of like you're in trouble you're going to get into trouble like you're being sent to the headmistress's office do you ever get that um after receiving criticism yeah i don't think so no no it's, uh, maybe yeah. that's the difference in our in our experience there yeah so what I does that feel like for you well, because I would say that you're more empowered than me because I think when I go into that space, I've lost my sense of power. And obviously that's in the subplexus, so that's just around the stomach area. And I feel like I've, and I'm saying this for people that are listening, if perhaps when they get criticism, I feel like I've got really heavy black rocks in the pit of my stomach. And, and then it kind of like, the energy just kind of takes over my whole body and I'm covered in this blackness and I feel like a bad person and so but that doesn't really happen to me so much nowadays okay. and it does it's a fleeting thing that comes in and then my good enough parent can come in and go hey 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 no no that don't don't be so hard on yourself you know that's not what that is yeah, you know how to bring um, yourself out of that energy now yeah but yeah but I I think, you know, like that's why people can get defensive when they're criticised because they've gone into that shame space, that inner child space where they're thinking that they're a terrible person. And I don't know, I suppose I just want to say like what, what someone else thinks of you is not truth. Like you've got to know who you are and be confident. Yeah, absolutely. About it's interpretation. That. Absolutely. Like just to compare there. So I would get hit in the solar plexus as well. Right. Okay. Um, and I would just feel like I would just be kind of I feel like I'm kind of fading you know what I mean like the vibrancy and that like it's like oh oh god all right you know and then there's a kind of maybe that bit of imposter syndrome like oh yeah maybe I'm not quite as bloody great as I thought I was there yesterday or whatever you know what I mean so and and there's there's just a, a sense of uh, a lesser you know there's a um, uh, a fading, a fading of energy is where I is is what I, I suppose I describe it as, and it's so important in that moment to to sit with that and to then decide consciously. Okay, I just I need to put a boundary up here until I figure out what I think about this, and then I can go back and kind of use my critical thinking and use my intuition and use all of what I know to be true already to then take this on board. Do you know what I mean? That fading energy, just, just to, out of interest, because my big black rocks energy, for want of a better expression, yeah. makes me want to hide. That fading energy, does it make you want to withdraw and hide? But maybe you're withdrawing to protect yourself because then you're putting a boundary in place there. Oh yeah, like I said, I would, maybe that's where in the past I would have responded through my emotion and I would have and again maybe as a generator human design I would have responded right or I would have felt the need to express or explain or justify or whatever whereas now I know it's like I'm just not giving my power away now anymore and I'm going to sit for as long as it takes until I feel an aligned kind of communicative open spirit to then return to that conversation do you know what I mean so that's why if it's on the spot you know, say if you're in a corporate environment and you're 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 receiving feedback from a manager or something and it really has triggered you, it's very, very difficult compared to the situation, you know, that maybe would happen myself or yourself. You know, we have online businesses, we have all kinds of people giving us advice, you know, but we can take that time, you know. So I, I suppose I'd love to get the message out that if you are in that situation, try your best to eke out that time if you can you know, for yourself, find your own yeah. level on it first. Uh, I would always say, because I, because I, I happen to go into a trauma response, which is a freeze response. So believe it or not, if I was face to face with someone that was talking to me like that, I would lose my, I would lose my voice. I would go, uh, yeah, right. Uh, I would feel like I wanted to cry. So I wouldn't, I thought I'd yeah. have to just stand there and brave it out and then take myself off to the toilet and probably have a little cry or, or, or ring someone and say, oh, I'm having a bad day. Mm, yeah. but, um, 
but now I don't do that. Now I take myself off. I, I, I realise that I freeze and I just concentrate on regulating my energy. And sometimes I will just put my shields up and just give it all back. You know, like I'll just yeah. shield up. So you can have that back because I'm not, I'm, I will take that on but when I'm not in this space. Yeah. And then I'll boil it and like run my hands under the cold tap and just try and get myself back in my body again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very useful advice because I suppose you know, we've both created an environment in our lives where we're not maybe in those situations. And that's why, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I always wanted to work for myself and always wanted to have a kind of a life of freedom as such was so that I didn't have to be dealing with all the energies around me, you know what I mean? On the spot so that there is always that time and there's a bit of a buffer, you know what I mean? But so it is different, isn't it? When, when it's right in front of you, than when, when you can actually take the time to, to calibrate to it. That's the, I was, the I, big difference. I was in a situation recently where somebody, I wanted to, to talk about what had happened on text message because I'm, I'm very articulate with my words, yeah. but, face to face when I'm triggered I just don't I can't I, I'm still learning to like you know get the solar plexus to talk to the throat chakra yeah, and yeah. That but there's I think, something about, you know, yeah and then your brain leaves you and you can barely form a sentence it's like the mind goes blank it's mad yeah so, so what well, I, I said to them yeah I was boundaried with her, them and I said um, I'm not able to talk to you today. Um, if it's urgent, you can send me a voice note or a text message. Happy to hash it out on 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 text. No, no, I want to talk to you. And they were quite insistent and very pushy. And I felt like they wanted to talk to me because they were trying to change my mind about something. And again, it's like you're reading that energy. Like they're not saying that, but I can feel. It's almost like my analogy would be like if I open the door a crack, they put their foot in and barge into the room mm. when I'd ask them not to come in yeah what I'm saying yeah. their energy felt really big and forceful mm. so I was keeping it on the text to contain it to contain the energy yeah and see this is the thing they don't know they're doing that you know what I mean so no. there be, might be lots of other people in that person's life that will just take that and be no big deal but if you are highly sensitive yeah. if, you, if you if you are an empath and you are physiologically and emotionally wired differently, then the threshold for that big butt in the door that isn't welcome is different. It's very, very different. And I suppose that's the part of what the messaging that I'm trying to trying to hone and write with 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 these tasks for these experts, you know, is to get that message out there that there is a difference you know that's not that a hsp is weaker or can't take what you're saying they can take it as well as the next person it's just a different experience in how they receive it at the speed at which they can process it <clears throat> the different levels and layers that it means for that person that it might mean for someone else you know so it's just a different sensory threshold kind of thing that's absolutely it. and like in your mm -hmm. personal life like um you know, say I was say I was in a relationship with a partner and we had conflict. Um, I you know most HSPs don't like conflict. We like we like peace and love, man. We're all about the peace and love. Uh, so yeah. I I, I would want to be with someone who, if we had an argument, maybe we would have to have a chat on text first and then come together and have a hug, and then maybe talk it through after we've hugged mm -hmm. it out. But like initially, standing in front of me, I won't be able to talk, and then I'll get upset well, with myself. Because I can't find my voice and then I'll end up getting emotional mm. and then if you're with someone who's an NH a non-HSP they can be like oh you with all your emotions and make you feel like you're too too much mm. but actually that yeah. is too much for you like your nervous system can't handle it yeah yeah no it's such a good point and I think there you know when you when you do have a close relationship with someone um <clears throat> you know let's say a long-term relationship, then you have a dance, you know, that you both know pretty well, you know, and you understand each other's kind of love language, you understand each other's process and how things work, you know, but if you're in a professional setting and it's not a personal relationship and it's right there and you have to kind of deal with it straight on, you know, that is, mm -hmm. that is very different. Um, and I think that, it's it's such a difficult one to talk around because HSPs are 
different and they do have a different threshold for what's coming at them, it doesn't mean that they can't take it. They're just receiving it differently. You know what I mean? I also think we need time to gather our energy because we're so impacted by what goes on around us. Like, I really wish sometimes, I was thinking this yesterday, I was watching um, uh, an energy uh, video on YouTube um, uh, doing some, like, energy clearing exercises. And I really wish I could see auras. Obviously, I can feel them. Mm. But I wish I could see them because then I would know what was coming at me and then I would feel prepared. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's only when when it comes into the room and it's too late and it's got you and then it's in your aura and then you're Absolutely. like right now I have to deal with this before I yeah. can deal with a hundred percent like it's kind of like the the most jarring experiences are when the person is is physically close to you and that energy has is overtaking your aura and then if you're if you're maybe tired that day or you haven't slept so well or there's a lot going on in your life, or, you know, you maybe haven't got great nutrition that week or something, then you're going to be triggered more. You know what I mean? So that's why we're always talking about self-care, because part of that self-care is protecting the energy bubble around you, like, you know, so that it is resilient to what's coming quite close. <laughs> Yeah, and wanting to do that for yourself doesn't make you special or a princess or entitled or whatever. It's called taking care of your needs and people need to understand that different mm. people have different needs and respect that, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. But I suppose another thought I had there, you know, and it's related, it's kind of like, is the non-HSP matrix world, is it, <laughs> is it like revered or appreciated, this whole criticism thing? You know what I mean? Is it like something that you know we should be able to handle you know what I mean is it like as, as humans is it something that we're supposed to you know okay I'll th throw the criticism at me I'll be grand like is that is that what the the overall kind of aim is in society no I think that's old school but I think the woke movement if I may use that as a way to <laughs> there we go <laughs> has gone too far in to be kind and then that means that we're tolerating behaviours that we shouldn't have to tolerate. So, like, I think we've gone from pull your socks up, get on with it, don't be a precious snowflake, to being overly compassionate and kind to people who need to take responsibility for their shitty behaviour. Yeah, it's somewhere in the middle of that to scooch back and come, and that's got to come, you know, back into balance again. Mm, that's interesting. But... um. When I got the feedback, you know, it just, I suppose, as a coach and like as a coach, you are very coachable because you know what it is to coach. Do you know what I mean? And most good coaches, all good coaches would have their own coaches so that they have a level of self-awareness, you know, so that, that that boundary is very clear between between me and my clients kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but um, I forgot now what I was going to say. <laughs> It'll come back. What I was going to say, the thing is, when you ask for it, you're prepared for it. The only sort of thing I can think of as an example that's similar to that is when you're at a party and someone says, what do you do for a living? And you tell them you're a coach. You don't say that anymore. You say you work in a shop because then they come at you and all their stuff comes at you and you're not in coaching mode. So you're not ready for it. Mm. I just think there's some kind of like that's why in the coaching space, when you have a client, it's held in a container, whatever that container is, whether it's a group forum or it's mm. a, a WhatsApp message or it's an hour session it has to be held in a container um yeah because that's a boundary yes because it's yeah. boundaries and energy and absolutely but but I suppose I find in a party situation like that you know I mean less now more so when I was younger um it's very hard for me not to kind of like if someone says, oh, what you do, uh, you know, I'm a career coach, then people would naturally kind of talk about their career. And I do mm -hmm. have a genuine interest always in like, you know, why do you do that? You know, what, what got you into that? You know, and then I find that I'm in those conversations and you're like, oh, my God, you know, so I suppose it depends on the subject matter as well. But I remembered what I was going to say. Um, Go on, say. So one of the things that struck me a lot when I was training, doing my coaching training certification was the difference between feedback and feed forward 
right? Okay. I always love this notion of feed forward. And sometimes it's the, you know, and this is maybe for the managers who are listening. This is for the empathic leaders. It's very much um, a small nuance between feedback and criticism and feeding forward, right? So co-creating with the person in front of you and kind of giving them, um, I think you had a beautiful phrase, was it? Something about the truth in a marshmallow. What was that? <laughs> oh, I'm a bullet covered marshmallow. Yes. That's, that's you know what I mean? I myself as. You know, there's lots of ways that you can present very useful information to people um, that can be feeding them forward, you know, helping them to move forward uh, and also also allowing you, you know, satisfying the fact that you're giving whatever information you have to give or whatever feedback you have to give. Do you know what I mean? I think it's really important. And that's why HSPs and people who have an abundance of empathy make such great leaders. But they don't, a lot of them don't get to the point of leadership because it's all, the, the, the road to get there is set up in a very non-HSP way. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm just all about empathic leadership at the moment. And it's the smallest nuance, the smallest change when you are communicating with someone that can transform their experience of receiving it. And that applies to everyone, HSPs and non-HSPs. Yeah, it's a bit dog eat dog in the corporate world when you look higher up the ladder you go, I think. Um, well, that was my experience at British Gas. But I was going to say, before you explain what feedback and feed forward, can you give us examples of that? I just want to tell people what the marshmallow yeah, covered on. bullet It's the was. same thing. Hey, it's much. the same, it's oh, the same the thing. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so the bullet is the truth. Like, you cut straight to the truth. But I'm really good at getting, like, in sessions, I'll get right to the heart of the matter. Like, I'll let it bumble along to say, yeah. and then we're about... 20 minutes before the end and I say do you know what I'm seeing here blah, blah, blah. and yeah but it's coated in that marshmallow softness so it's delivered with the empathy yeah if I was in your shoes how would I want to receive that right now what how would that land for me how would I want to hear that precisely that's the same thing so feedback is that kind of direct criticism you did this wrong and this was All this right. and this should be as and feed forward is bringing in the empathy, bringing in the knowledge you have of that person, bringing in their objectives, your objectives, bringing those together, you know, just having a more humane conversation around it, basically. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be dog eat dog. It doesn't have to be. But I mean, you know, I'm talking as if it's bloody 1980. Like, you know, a lot of corporations out there are, are have fantastic managers who aren't yeah. HSPs. I'm not saying you have to be HSP to be a good manager, you know, not in the slightest. And there's amazing forward thinking organizations like some of the people that I'm working with as an associate coach. And I see them coming from all different kind of global organizations, you know, I'm so impressed with how leadership is going and how things are moving and there is so much forward thinking, you know what I mean? So it's a very hopeful space. I just want to encourage more of it, you know? I think the, the best managers I've had are ones who have shown empathy. So that's how you get the best out of people. That's how you become a coach. You meet that person in the space where they are. They feel seen, they feel heard, they feel understood. Bam, they're just going to perform like, nobody's business like mm. it sort of going back to my old job with the kids in the schools schools couldn't understand because they weren't trauma informed that those kids couldn't learn unless they felt safe in their bodies unless they had a safe person or they were sack off assembly get them to all come in and ground their energy in the morning when they come in like it's impossible for kids to learn if they don't feel safe and uh, schools are run like businesses aren't they so it's all a numbers game and and uh it's all about grades and outcomes and 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 i'm thinking more for like not secondary school children i'm thinking more for like the middle the middle school and the the baby school um you know like they need that kind of gentle and you see this is where people go gentle parenting is permissive parenting let kids do what they like no there's boundaries there's rules like kids know where they stand but it's the marshmallow covered bullet where you're always telling them the truth and you're always being direct, but you treat them with respect and kindness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think <laughs> if if you're not speaking from the heart and truthfully, you know, then sure we 
you know, there'll always be complication. There'll always be misinterpretation, misunderstanding. Like honesty has to be at the heart of, of all these kind of conversations. And like, you know, I suppose to give my mentors their dues, it was coming, my recent experience was coming from a very good place. Do you know what I mean? It really was. And it has helped me a lot. It has moved okay. me forward, do you know? So <clears throat> I think the bottom line, the message for today is that we can take criticism. Anyone can, but you have to understand yourself, your sense of self, your own process your own energy flow to be able to use whatever's coming at you to filter it firstly and then to maybe leverage whatever whatever truth there is inside you know that that gold and there probably is some gold because sometimes sometimes when we're progressing when we're expanding when we're growing we need to hear stuff you know what I mean we do we need to hear things that aren't the easiest to hear you know but again you apply a growth mindset you understand your own process and it can be really beneficial. It's 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 all about self-understanding. Yeah, I, well, you, you always want a, a friend who tells you that you've got your skirt tucked in your knickers or you've got spinach between your teeth or a bogey from your nose. It's the same thing. Like that's exactly. the true friend. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You don't want someone that's going to uh tell you you look lovely or it's great when it isn't because that's never going to help you progress but exactly I just wondered going back to your scenario just one more thing that's popped into my head is okay. do you think when you got feedback it wasn't what you were expecting and there was a bit of a shock factor because I do think when that energy comes mm. in if you really quite strongly it can be like shock or unexpected I think there was a surprise because it was kind of like in my diligence you know, in my kind of like, oh, I'm I'm following the instructions here. I'm 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 doing exactly, or I thought I was doing exactly what I was what I was advised to do. Um, in my diligence, I kind of thought, oh yeah, and I'm kind of on point there. You know what I mean? So then the fact that I wasn't was that it was surprising to me, absolutely, um, <clears throat> for a few reasons. But it also made me realize, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cough today. It also made me realize that um, I had lost the 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 kind of the the heartfelt voice that I used to have you know what I mean wow. so through the diligence I had gone too much into my head and had left my heart behind a little bit which is which was a huge shock to me because never in my life have, have I been accused of being unemotional <laughs> do you know what I mean and it was uh -huh. like oh my god but I had I had become somewhat academic and clinical in my language because I was trying to get it right do you know what I mean so it's a it's a gift for me to kind of yeah. say you know what I'm just going to drop back into my heart from here on in and just go back to what what that aligned messaging that that I would have started with but now I have that with the added knowledge of what they have taught me do you know what I mean yeah but I do think it goes back to that <clears throat> discernment that action of like these people that are advising you, I don't know them, but I'm thinking if they're living in the same world that we're experiencing online all the time, it is pretty brutal out there. Like yeah. our reach is for a small business owner, Bruh. like getting <laughs> feedback and getting visibility unless you've got massive amounts of money to pay to Mark Zuckerberg. It, it ain't happening. It's a slow burn. And like yeah. we all accept that. But I think to put your to keep putting your heart out there, Sinead, like to take their advice because they're in that well, but then that's not who you are. So it is that balance between, mm. yeah, put your heart out there, your heart centered messaging, but also pull back a bit sometimes and don't, don't give all of that to people all the time because that can be quite exhausting. I think. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. There has to be a balance that you're not, um, it's kind of the balance between, you know, service and, um, you know, coming from a place of service and that beautiful kind of feminine energy, but also, you know, I I need to sustain myself here. You know what I mean? I am a business, so I can't be doing everything for free. Actually, one, um, I had a chat with someone just this week um, and she used the, the phrase, um, we need to turn profit into a kind word. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. We have to do, we have to do a talk on that. We have to do something with that because, you know, I think when there is, when we are coming from that beautiful kind of, you know, a lot of women in business, a lot of that feminine energy and we're giving and we're coming from the heart, we can kind of forget the self-sustenance, 
you know, and, and the to sustain ourselves, you know. So absolutely, I agree with you there. There's a balance, but um, it's authenticity, isn't it? It's just letting your voice flow a little bit, like bravely being you. We're back to bravely being you and just allowing for that and not getting too much in my head. I think that's the lesson that I learned. Yeah, but that masculine, that yang energy, if you look at it as yin and yang, like yeah. the online world is like uber yang at the moment. Mm. It's like be more yang and we're bringing in the yin, but we can't bring in enough yin to balance that out because otherwise we deplete ourselves. Yeah, yeah such a good way to put if it. A, Absolutely. Yeah, if there's a group of us coming together and uprising, like as we say, there's a, like an uprising for feminine supposedly, I guess it's just going to take a little bit of time to kind of break through that, if if at all. If we can, I don't know. I think it's um, I suppose it's 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 all about collaboration. I think is the bottom line, you know. Instead of and and that's the the I suppose the difference I've seen over the years, men and women. It's kind of it is collaborative versus maybe more transactional. You know what I mean? And that's not that's not to criticize men because it's a very natural place for them to be. It's not as natural for us. It's just not how we're we're built or wired. You know. So I think it's leveraging the beauty of that but also kind of saying no you know what this is this knowing your worth and being able to charge for it yeah absolutely so just so, to so to summarize today yeah it's, my, it's a tough it's a tough call to summarize today <laughs> all right we've gone we've covered a lot of issues but i think they yeah. all kind of feed into one another all are relevant what i'm taking away is feed forward when you ask for it if it's not asked for and you get it, shields up, bat it back. Um, if you're giving it to someone, always tell the truth with kindness and compassion. And a little marshmallow, and, wrapped in a marshmallow. Yeah, wrapped in a marshmallow. And if you're if you're if your energy doesn't feel grounded and aligned, you've got to take care of that first before you can unpack it all and like learn that because there are lessons in it, but you just have to be in that space. Because there's nothing worse, is there, when you're triggered and someone's going, but you know, you could learn a bit. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, know, like, no, I can't. think the one the one I love is like not to trigger you now or anything. What? <laughs> are you fucking getting? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm triggered. And but also to say to people listening, HSP or non HSP, we're all triggered. We've all got shadows. We've all got stuff that we carry around, and not to shy away from being triggered. Like to kind of. Like you say, allow Absolutely. It. But that's the thing. I don't think that term is a marshmallow. You know, it's a bit like, you know, no offense, but you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not, not that's not rude, a marshmallow. I'm not I'm not being rude, but and then yeah. say fifty rude things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, so um I think that's a beautiful summary that you came up with. Absolutely. You're spot on today. It's been an interesting conversation. It's been interesting. It, it, it has. Thank you. And um I think it's something I'm always going to struggle with that and judgment. Maybe we could talk about judgment and the inner critic another yeah, day. Maybe that... we'll do that next. Well, wait, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because wow, the inner critic for HSPs can really be off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. All right. See you later. See you so, soon. Bye, everyone. Take care.